All right, we're good. Ashihi, welcome to Cork's Red FM. It is absolutely brilliant to have you on. How are you doing? Hi, Steph. I am very good. How are you getting on? I'm good. You're on holidays right now. Tell us where you are coming to us live all the way from. Yeah, I'm I'm like north of Alicante, a little town called El Campello. Um, so out my window, it's pretty dismal at the moment. Are you experiencing some sunshine? Is this something that's happening? There's a bit, there's a bit of sun. There's a bit of sun. I booked this when like I, I booked this during March because like it was just like I can't deal with this weather. <laughs> Too much. At least if there's, I can see the light up ahead. At least that'll keep me going. Um, yeah, so I booked, absolutely. So I booked the holiday for after the tour, and we finished up the tour on Sunday, and the flight was on Tuesday from Kerry, which is so handy. So it was that just is enough. that is that is expertly done. I have to say. Yeah. Yeah. So it has been a massive year for you. Like you've embarked on a solo career after a huge few years with Walking on Cars, more than a few years, a really long stint. The music is kind of headed in a slightly different direction, I would say. Unmistakably you, though, because it's just that passion he voice that, like, I think anyone would recognise. But can you tell me, like, a little bit about the direction you're heading in and, like, how you're enjoying it so far? Um, yeah, it's been a it's been a learning process, I suppose, in terms of the sound. I feel like it's probably gone a little softer, a little bit more folky. Um, but there's also, like, the songs that I haven't released that I listen to and they're just... There's, like there's also like proper like radio bangers ready to go. Mm -hmm. But for now, I feel like there's a side that hasn't been released yet. Um, so this next EP is a much softer approach and much more chilled approach and probably probably more suited to like sync rather than like a bit like big radio singles. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, enjoying that process and just seeing what else is out there. That kind of way. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really I'm really enjoying it. I think it's it's cool to hear your voice sitting in a different space, you know, like the nice falsetto, the higher kind of lines. It's sounding, it just sounds so, so good. You've done one EP already. It was a huge success. And like the, I think the fans are really, really connecting to the new music. Like it's obvious that people are really liking it. You have a new EP coming out on June 9th, Lost in a 90s Arcade. I absolutely love the title. Talk to me a little bit about this next round of songs that are coming. Yeah, so I suppose during the whole writing process of this EP, I always, like I felt a little bit like, I didn't know where I was going in my life. So I was a little like this. I was totally kind of just a little bit lost. And I find that when you don't know where you're going in life, you tend to revert back to what you did know. So even in the last kind of year or so, I found myself like getting like a PlayStation 1 and like loads of silly PlayStation games I used to have when I was a kid, like Tekken 3 and like FIFA 98, and, like NBA games. Um, and just kind of reverting back to my almost my my, my childhood a little bit. Um and also playing a lot of soccer lately, which is something I used to do all the time when I was a kid and not so much as an adult. Um mm -hmm. so yeah, just reverting to to my to my nineties growing up period. It's like a comfort thing though, I suppose. It's like because you know, I think most musicians, I've experienced it myself, like you can get very, very quickly lost in what you're doing and it sometimes can swallow you up a little bit to where you actually have loads of great stuff, but you can't even really see what's in front of you because you're just not feeling in the headspace of it all. And sometimes like it is that going back to the basics, like literally, they always say it, back to basics kind of brings you back to centre again. So do you think that doing those kind of things has helped you to kind of get this particular body of work over the finish line? Um, Like I'm a very addictive personality. So for me to go buy a PlayStation, that's a dangerous move. <laughs> I mean, um, so I I just feel like like the writing process has been cool and I've been writing throughout like the last year, but I just feel like in that time I didn't really know what I was doing myself or where I was going. Um, so hopefully this EP is is designed to to help me move forward with my life and and uh, and grow up a small bit again. <laughs> the new single uh, "Meet Me at the Record Store." I I love it. It's absolutely stunning. It's doing so, so, so well. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I have you now again. Sorry. Okay. Um, so just saying the new single, Meet Me at the Record Store, it's awesome. Oh, thank I you. I just love it. And it's it's flying. It's doing so, so well. What was the inspiration of a, for like a track like this? What was the kind of the, the thought behind it? Um, I suppose I wanted to write a tune that kind of captured the moment that music was what I was going to do. And I suppose throughout the last couple of years, like leaving the band and stuff and starting something brand new, like there's been times where I'm like, oh, geez, I'm not sure I'm able for this. Maybe this isn't for me. Um, so that song um, questions 
what I would have been or who I would be now if if music wasn't a part of my life. Like if you take music away, who's who's that guy? Um, so it just goes back to that kind of like for me, like a big part of growing up was going into a record store and picking up a CD or yeah, picking up a CD and looking at the artwork and thinking, oh, that artwork looks fucking great. Mm. And having never even heard of the band before and going back home and listening to it and falling in love with that record based on what it looked like. Mm. And uh, and there was one time where there was a Bowie album on in Roxy Records. And I remember just thinking, what is that tune? And uh, I went up to the counter and they're like, oh, this is the album. So I got the album, brought it home and, and just fell in love with it. It's a it's a thing that's kind of a little bit lost these days, isn't it? Like is going in and digging. I think people actually are kind of coming back around to it again, going in looking for music. But it seems to be a little bit different these days with the way you, you find music. So there is such a nostalgia attached to that. That's why I think this song is so, so good. You've been on tour recently, uh, an acoustic tour. Uh, mm. Lovely, like intimate. Well, they're not they're actually not that small. They're they're kind of big venues, really. But any standout shows or moments for you that have happened in the last kind of couple of weeks that you've been out in the road? Um, yeah, we did. We did a show on the Pepper Canister in Dublin. Mm. Uh, so it's just myself and uh, a keys player, Rory McCarthy and uh, Hannah Cullen on viola. And they both sing as well. So um, we did a show on the Pepper Can- Canister. It was sold out. And I'd never played there before, but I've been a fan of the venue for a long time. Mm. Um, so it was, on, it was on my bucket list. And uh, it was just the most gorgeous thing I've I've experienced in a live setting in so, so long. Um, cool. It was just, just, I don't know. There's something about playing acoustic music in churches that it just feels right. And there was, there was like, you could, there was huge emotion in the room and it was just a lot of, energy in it and it was just just leaving the stage after I was like Jesus that was that was unbelievable it's those kind of songs as well you know I think that like obviously you you've come from the band um you've played the biggest stages you could imagine but there is a mood attached to what you're doing now that I think those venues would be where I would want to see you I'd mm. want to see you in you know like a St. Luke's or a Pepper Canister because the songs are so they're so nice. They're so gentle. They're so like yeah. they're just they're just really really suit those venues. So, how does it feel like playing intimate venues? And I suppose getting to meet. I suppose you're kind of you're you're way more involved in the in the room. I would imagine in those kind of venues as opposed to like the big massive stages that that you have played on uh, mm. all throughout your career. Yeah, like the uh, in one sense, it's it's a, yeah, obviously it's a much more intimate setting. So there's nowhere to hide. So it, it was easy for me to like hide behind the big sound and the big music and the big mm. drums and the big production. Here, like it's just you go out there with your acoustic guitar and your song mm. and you hope it connects. There's no yeah. bells and whistles attached. And like I feel like for me, a big part of what I these couple of tours I've done is um I remember I was in Dingle and there was an Illin Piper playing, and uh, his name was Owen Dyke, and he's a local. He's a Dingle man. Well, he's originally from Dublin, but he's living in Dingle years and years. Um, but he, I went to see him in a church in Dingle, and I remember it was around the time I was in in the band, and mm. I remember looking at him, and he was sitting on his chair with his Illin pipes, and he was playing away, and he had the whole church just like in the palm of his hand, mm. and it was like I was entranced by it. It was unbelievable. I've never like it was one of the best gigs I've ever been to, and uh, I remember thinking. Look at him there sitting on his arse and he's got the crowd in the hand and I'm 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 there like my a big part of my thing in walking in cars was from running from one end of the stage to the yeah. other end of the stage and getting the crowd to sing along and just hyping the crowd and you know going a bit mental like I was like a jack in the box, you know what I mean? <laughs> so for me, I looked at him and I said, Jesus, that's 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 something to to work on and that's something to kind of aim for. So I suppose a part of a big part of the last couple couple of tours was trying to see if I could pull that kind of gig off. Man, I love that. That is, that's, that's amazing. Honestly, that's, it's so amazing to see, like, because it, it's different perspectives on different things and the things that can impact you when you see them. Like, you just, you can never tell what's going to grab somebody. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, people can go and pre-order the EP right now. We want everybody to do that. It's like I said, it's coming out on June 9th. Uh, Lost in a 90s arcade. Go get it. Like, go pre-order it right now. I am very excited because I am delighted to have co-written one of the tracks with yourself, Connor Byrne and Gary Keane. In terms of the immediate future, 
you know, looking forward to, to the EP coming out, like, what are you most excited for for the next couple of months? Like, what's the what's the feeling? Um, the feeling is that obviously I haven't released music in quite a while. So for this EP to come out, I feel like it's going to be a good sense of where I'm going with it. Um, and then there's more music at the end of the year. So, yeah, it's it's fine. It's like, it feels like I'm back mm. doing what, what I've wanted to do for a long time. But it just took a minute to figure it all out because it is a different sound, it's a different energy and uh yeah i'm really looking forward to, to for it to be released and just on the song we we wrote together mm. um i've been playing that on the tour and like when i tell there's there's some nights where i can't tell the story because i'll get caught up and i won't yeah. get off. but when i do tell the story oh my god is it the it's the highlight of the gig it really is the highlight of the gig for people because it's it knocks, um... knocks them it just knocks them anyone with anyone going through something to do at last they're gone they can't yeah. it's it's almost it's i'm excited so... the, the song is called calling and it, it, it is it is written about kind of like loss and, and grieving and it is stunning and you sing it so well um and i have i've kind of given keeping an eye on your socials a little bit to see because you always ask like what songs and i was like it's cool to see it popping up but um you just it, it's your voice on it as well is just absolutely unbelievable you know what i mean it's it's the whole feeling of it and i think sometimes for songs to cut through giving the context does really get people mm. to to yeah. listen what you're well, saying well, you thank, know? You. thank you for that because that was one of the first times i used that kind of style of vocal and i remember you saying oh that sounds great and i was so nervous to actually even go down that road yeah uh, and it gave me a little nudge and a little a bit of encouragement to keep people <laughs> kind of style so so thank you well man it's great i i am so excited for what's to come for you for the next couple of months and like i know here at red fm we are going to be like supporting you definitely wishing you the biggest success with all you've got going on and you're going to smash it so thank you so much for your time today go and enjoy your holiday and we will hopefully see you down here in studio soon steph thank you so much i'll check you soon legend all right